Hello everyone. So in the previous video, I show you this in a very simplistic way, how to spot a trend. Basically, it was a combination between three EMAs and MACD. In this example, I created the strategy for Thinkorswim. And it was basically, um, I wanted to buy whenever a stock was above this three MA and they were stuck and the MACD was positive. And I was selling if the MACD was crossing to negative or if the stock was below the first EMA. Here you see the strategy only. If you check the video, you want to see the scan. Basically, it was this strategy. You can see here the result. You can change, let's say, T-Mobile. This is T-Mobile. Let's put AT&T, for example. I'm buying based on certain criteria and I'm selling based on another one, right? And then I see here, this is the p &L accumulated for this stock in this time. If I go to Tesla, for example, you want to see here also the p and And let's say AMD, for example. Something that I highlighted is that for in, in AMD, it has been trending down. And in this example, something that a strategy is trying to do is buy whenever it's in uptrend based on the four stages that I explained. And if the stock start going down in a downtrend or the fourth uh, stage, I, I just want to give my money. I don't want to trade. So the strategy is very simple and it's not intended for a full working strategy. It's more to give you an idea how um, we can create the selection of universe of a stock that we want to trade. Now, something that is very limited here is that if you want to see the if the strategy works or not in think or swim, you will need to open stock by stock. You see here, we made the money at the beginning. When the stock is trading really bad, we keep the money. This is good if you go one by one, but it could be it could be too biased for the stocks. So I want to do something more generic. I would like to run this strategy for all the traded US stock. And for that, you need to do a back test. Think or swim is not good for that. That's one of the limitations. And in this case, you need to get some Python library or something more serious for development. So for this reason, um, before I have tried uh, backtest, a Python library that, that was called backtest, I tried vector BT. Vector BT is really nice. It's a little difficult to learn first, but it's fast. Is efficient. Now you need to have a computer. So in this, but in this case, um, you're gonna be trying Quant Connect. And if you know Python, you get some information about the API. You can develop your strategy on the web. They have some Visual Studio Code plugin there running, and you can develop that on the web. So you can use your iPad or your computer, and then you can run the back test online. Of course, you you gonna have to pay um, for this, but. Uh, but I think it's a really good option. So before, let me put this disclaimer, these five points that are really important. Okay, now that we have the disclaimer, I want to go back to uh, Quant Connect. Yeah, but before you start working on your strategy in the main class, you can go to this environment that is for testing and research. I think they call it research and they're gonna open this um, notebook for you. So I'm gonna try to replicate exactly what I did in Thinkorswim. I'm gonna replicate it first in the notebook because it's simple. I can use Plotly to see the chart, my entries, all that. And then if it works, I can I can migrate this to the back testing area and it's gonna be, it's very simple. And then I can do the back testing through, I don't know, 6,000 or whatever is the amount of stocks in in us market okay so i'm gonna run here uh let me connect to one of the python environments i'm gonna be showing uh moving slowly here so you can see the code so the first area is based on the quant connect specific uh way to obtain and subscribe to data right so in this case i'm gonna get equity for at&t for example and i'm gonna get this data from 2020 let me put 2020 all the way to today. They have some indicators already created, but in this case, just for the sake of going through the whole exercise, I'm gonna be doing my own indicator. I'm gonna program everything. Something that I'm gonna do is create a pandas data frame with all the information that you get, like a close, high, low, open, volume, all that information. And then I'm gonna create the MACD histogram 
based on that. So the first function is for the MACD histogram. The second function is going to be to check if the EMAs, the are stack. And in this case, I want to, I call it stack when the 13 EMA is above 21 and 21 is above 34 fast EMAs for the daily. And then once I have all this information for the EMAs and the MACD, I want to get my signal. I want to define my stop loss. I want to define my entry condition. And then I want to define my exit condition. I don't want to go in details to the code. It's just more, you can open the stop the video one second, review the code, research about how pandas works, all that information. And then once I, I define these three functions, then I'm going to get the data frame and I'm going to create the 13 EMA using this function from pandas, the 21, 34. Once I have the EMAs, I'm going to call this method that I already specified. And how you can see here now, this is the pandas originally from Quant Connect. I'm going to get the close, high, low, open volume, but then I'm going to create these three EMA. EMAs, and then I'm going to calculate the MACD. Something that I want to do here is define if the histogram is positive or negative. In this case, it's going to be above zero or below zero. And also I'm gonna, I want to define if it's a stack. You can see here if I have an entry signal or an exit signal. Once I have all this, well, I want to plot that. And this is the code for plotting. Um, you can go to Plotly uh, website uh, for the Python version, and you want to find out how to use their uh, control. So in this case, you define this uh, candle chart and then you start adding traces for the OHLC that is open, high, low and close in the first row, in the first column. I want to plot the three EMAs I want to see in the chart. And then if I, I get an entry signal, I just want to see in the chart and the same thing for the exit. I want to plot the volume in the second row and then I want to plot the MACD histogram. How I specified before, I don't like too much the lines. It's going to be only the histogram. Once I have all this information, then I create the plotly. I like the dark theme and I see it. So it's going to open that chart for you. And we're going to see all this. This is a little crowded, but if we expand, for example, we can see with more details this area. So this is too much data for, for one chart. So let's plot 2024 only until today, it's going to calculate everything. And then you want to see all that. Now you see all this sync exit signal and entry signal in this exercise. I want to see every single time that is a positive, positive one, because how it's going to work is, is if I receive a signal, I'm going to enter, I'm going to buy the stock. And every time that I receive the signal, I'm going to check in the algorithm if I already have a position. So in this case, I'm going to enter here and I'm going to be receiving all these signals. And that's fine because I already have a position. I won't be buying more. I want to do something very simple to show you the same thing. You can do that to another stock, for example, Apple. So in Apple, you see the same information when I have the entry signal and the exit signal. And it's very important that any strategy that you have, you try to replicate it first in the research. It's going to save you time. You can run it quickly and it's going to be better. So once you have all this working already, you can go to the lab. I think they call it lab. And then you can program your, your code. Let me collapse all this. And then if you remember the three um, methods that I have, the three functions, they are here. Exactly the same code. You just need to put self at the beginning, but everything else is the same. And now that I have all these, again, I don't want to get into details on how Quant Connect works. You can stop the video and check online. Uh, in the API and the help. But again, um, I want to trade stocks from 2020 to 2025. Uh, this is a cash account. I'm going to be trading 1 million. My stop loss is 13 because I'm going to be calculating the 13 EMA for a stop. And my entry is eight for the criteria. I want stocks that are trading, uh, on that day, two millions or more that have an average volume of two million. And the market cap is above 10 billion. So this is a big cap. And because I'm going to be requesting data for all this, I need to warm up Quant Connect to get this information for the 34 dates, because it's the biggest EMA that I have. And the warm up data is going to bring me the daily information. Now I don't have a selection of stocks for that reason. I'm going to run the universe. So they're going to trigger every single day, all the stocks for 
the US market, I'm gonna start and then I'm gonna filter based on my criteria. I'm gonna choose which one I want to trade. So there are two functions that they use. This is the first one. And in this one, for it's it's more like a, is this the first filter that you're gonna to apply to the algo before I start bringing historic data? And here I'm gonna select stocks above 10 billion in a price between $10 and 1,000. And then I'm gonna return the stock that meet the criteria. And then I'm gonna find, refine that a second time. And in this one, one of the things that I put in the uh, disclaimer is that this is not ready for real trading because this is super inefficient. I'm going through every single stock and bringing all this historic data. This exercise is only to show, to identify if the, we are in the good track, if the basic, the simple trend strategy could be good for trading or not, but this is far from real time. So they are, I think that you can subscribe to the data, to the indicators, warm up and bring all this. If the volume uh, for the stock that day is below the daily volume, that is 2 million, I don't want that stock. So continue to the next one. Now, if it's good above 2 million, then I'm gonna, this is something that you need to ask the Quant Connect code if I already have all the data, otherwise the data is gonna be incomplete. And you don't want to waste time processing something that is not complete. Uh, but once it's um, warm and you have all the data, then I'm gonna do a, replicate exactly the same thing that I have in the research environment. I'm gonna create the entry signal, the 13, 21, 34 EMA. I'm gonna calculate the MACD histogram. I'm gonna calculate if it's a stock. I'm gonna calculate the entry signals and the exit signals. Also, I want to calculate the average volume. After I have all these, this is gonna happen for the last 34 days. I want to get the latest, the one that is on that on that slice of time that day. And then I want to calculate here. Okay, this is uh, if applies, if the volume is uh, above the average volume and I have an entry signal. Okay, I want to add this stock to the universe of active stock that they're gonna be using. Once I refine the universe, if I, I want to, I don't want to trade more than a hundred. So if I recall, um, based on my criteria, I was receiving between 50 to 90 stocks daily. So for that reason, I put a 1 million um, and I'm returning a 100 because I'm going to be allocating 1% for each stock. Again, this is not ready for trading. There is no anything to manage the trade properly. I'm just going to be, if I receive the signal to enter, I'm going to buy 1%. And if I receive the signal to sell, I'm going to sell that stock. So I'm going to have always, I'm going to be allocated 1% of my account always to one of those in the universe. And sometimes it's going to be seven stock. Others, other time it's going to be more or less, but never more than 100. Okay. So Quant Connect, after they run all these two uh, universe, they're going to call this uh, event that is on secure change. First, I'm going to be checking what stock what security was removed from the universe if the security was removed i want just to close that position and then i want to check for the securities added to to the universe if it's not invested i'm gonna buy so this is a strategy it's a very simple very simplistic it's not ready for prime time but uh but it's gonna give us an idea of how it's working so i run a few back tests here this is a, the algo result. Again, this says 61% or something like that. Uh, P, PSR is not good, uh, but it's gonna give you an idea. This is a benchmark. I'm gonna be comparing this uh, PNL with uh, S&P 500 from 2020. And something that I noticed, yeah, it's positive. So I guess we are in a good track here. And something that I noticed is that when the S&P 500, the overall market, they have a pullback that is fast, violent. This strategy is uh, very good with the drawdown. It won't be trading too much in, in, in this bad time. However, yeah, you can see here and you can see here too. However, when the decline is slow and it's consolidating, the drawdown here is bad. And again, that this is, a, this is an strategy for trend. 
trading for a stage two. How you can see here, when the market is good, it's going to be going up. But when the market is uh, consolidating or trading in a range, yeah, the drawdown is going to be huge, like 18%. I think it's still good, 80%. But, uh, but again, this is something simple to have an idea if the simple strategy works or not. And then some information here. <laughs> uh, chart ratio, really bad. Uh, drawdown, 18%. Sorting or ratio, really bad. Uh, so again, this is an example how we can get some idea in Thinkorswim and backtest to have a better idea if it's going to work. And from here, we can start uh, doing something better. Okay, see you next time.